Hi everyone, it's Paul from this Design That. Today we're going to be reviewing the new Skater 3D from Edelkrone. So if you haven't heard of this new Autac range, basically it combines 3D printed parts with parts that are machined with aluminium. And essentially the idea is that the bulk of the product you can 3D print yourself with plans that Edelkrone supply. And then the parts that require maybe a little bit more accuracy or the rigidity of maybe a, you know, a metal, they are supplied by Edelkrone. And it reduces the cost of the overall product. Now you may have seen that we did a review of the Flex Tilt Head 3D previously about a month ago. You can check that out in the link above. Overall, my impressions weren't that good of the product and looking at other reviews it seemed that the general consensus was that they really liked the idea of the Autac range and so do I but the product didn't really kind of live up to I guess it's more expensive counterpart and that was that it was really noisy to to adjust the uh, the flex tilt head and also it didn't really work you basically either had to tighten it up so tight that it holds the camera in the position that you want. If you tighten it up too much, you can't move it. It's not really flexible. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this together. We've 3D printed all of the parts. So we've got the we've got the wheels and I'm guessing this is kind of like the main plate where the camera's gonna sit on top of. The parts that we get from Edelkrone, again, it's priced the same. It's, it's 29 euros, which is which is pretty good. I'm not too impressed with, with the finish of one of these parts. And I, I mean, maybe I'm just being really picky about this, but one of the machined parts, it's just scuffed on the edges and it's kind of ruined the, you know, the nice finish that you, that you expect from Edelkrone. And all of the other parts are very nice. They're very nicely finished, but just that one part, it doesn't affect the usability of it. It's not affected any of kind of like the threaded holes or anything like that, but it's just scuffed. And I, I don't know, you know, if there are any checks in place, but, Something like that should really be picked up. And also because the parts are actually packaged well, they're all in individual foam compartments you can see here. It's not like they've bashed against each other during transport. So this looks like it's really has, you know, happened during the machining part, which isn't really good. So we're gonna put this together. I'm guessing it's only gonna take a few minutes and then we will test it out. Let's just take a quick time out. I've been able to put the main base plate on and I think there's something off with the tolerances and Edelkrone thankfully do give you additional files that have slightly larger tolerances. This one was quite difficult to fit in. You could see how long that took me. I really had to force this in. I tried to do one of the wheels and it was clear that the tolerances, they're, they're just too tight. Now I know that the tolerance of my 3D printer is off by like 0.1 mil. So what I've done is the original wheels that I printed, they're no use. I've gone ahead and printed the wheels that have a additional 0.2 mil um, tolerance added to them. And I've just tested one of the bearings. I've just placed it in here and it's just gently pushing in and it fits in. Whereas the, the original ones, I couldn't even push them in. And Edelkrone do mention that it should really just be a, a snug fit. Shouldn't really force these in because obviously the bearings, they can come out. They're, they're quite delicate if you do have to force it in. So we're gonna go ahead and we will continue to put together the wheels now. Okay, so we're done. That was a little bit longer than the flex tilt head. It is a little bit fiddly, especially the wheels. Printing them with the larger tolerance definitely helped. Um, I quite like the idea of the fact that you can just twist it, and by twisting it, you're obviously changing um, the arc or the size of the arc that you're making. But let's stick the camera on it and let's see if we can get any smooth shots. Thank you. 
I want to go over the positives and negatives of what I think of this Skater 3D. So first of all, it is small and it is pretty lightweight. Um, so obviously that is good for portability. It's cheap, it's only 30 euros. And as you could see from some of the shots, it does work. So in that regard, I think for 30 euros, it's pretty good. I'm not sure if I would recommend it to everyone. And the biggest problem that I have with this is that it can only be used on a perfectly flat surface. So as you saw, the shots that are in my garden, I actually had a large mirror laid over a chair that I was using for the surface. Um, if you've got anything that isn't perfectly flat, it's gonna be picked up in the footage and the footage looks pretty terrible. The shots that you saw were the best shots from lots and lots and lots of takes. Now, if you are someone who is on a certain time restraint, you know, if you may be doing a shoot or something like that, I would not recommend this. Um, it does take multiple shots to get it right. I think that with motorized sliders or sliders that have flywheels, I think you can get much more consistent shots of it. You know, obviously something that you are operating by hand, you know, it's not gonna be perfect. You might shake, you might not be able to push it at the same uh, speed for the entirety of the shot. There's lots of things that can go wrong that can just mess up your footage. And also another thing with kind of like time issues is that it does add a certain time to the post-processing. Uh, you do have to add warp stabilizer to every single shot. I will show you a few shots now without the warp stabilizer. You know, you can see that it does a really good job, this effect in Premiere Pro, but it does add quite a lot of time to processing uh, when you are editing. The build quality is good. I, I like the idea with the wheels in that you've just got kind of like a nice rubber O-ring to add some sort of kind of dampening to, to the movement. But as I said, if you're not on a perfectly flat surface, it really doesn't do much to dampen the vibrations. Another thing that I liked with the Skater 3D was the fact that you can twist it to, to make the arc. And those shots seem to come out better than a straight line. I'm not sure why. I think maybe because, I don't know, maybe you've got like a different force applying it. You've kind of got some uh, inward force that kind of keeps, it kind of keeps the motion a little bit more stable. And I found that those shots going around like this, it just was easier for me to keep a nice kind of consistent motion. And I did like them shots and it was actually pretty easy to, to set it up at whatever angle you want and get those kind of panning around shots. But again, you know, you need to have it on a flat surface. You, you couldn't do it on like pavement or anything like that. Another slightly annoying thing was that I found that I couldn't use the flex tilt head with the skate up 3D. And I know that on the website in the pictures, it does show them being used together. Um, I found that because I was operating this by hand, the movements in my slight shakiness or slight difference in speed when I'm pushing it along, it was just amplified when the flex tilt was expanded in like a position like this. You know, when you've got a camera on top of here, uh, any sort of vibrations, they're just, they're just magnified even more and it's picked up even more in the footage. Even if you do tighten this really, really tight, it still just isn't good. If you've got the flex tilt head, fully collapsed like this, then it's okay, but it kind of defeats the purpose of using this with the skater. So um, I just ended up using the fluid tripod head um, attached to the skater, as you saw in, in the shots. So to conclude, would I recommend buying this? I do feel that this works better than the flex tilt head. Um, I wasn't impressed with the flex tilt head because it really didn't do what it was meant to do. I do feel that even though there are some negative points to the Skater 3D, it does work in some cases. So I think just, just the fact that it, you know it is a pretty cool project to, to put together, I think it's a really good introduction to, to something like 3D printing. I think if you've got like a, a kid or something like that who does like photography and likes 3D printing, it's a good project to get started with. It does work on some of the shots, but you'd need to have a perfectly smooth surface. I think anyone who is doing this professionally, 
or maybe if, you know if they're trying to get good shots for their YouTube channel, you know, would I recommend buying this? Probably not. I think that you know for a little bit extra money, you could probably just get a dedicated slider that you don't have to worry about kind of whereabouts you're shooting it, you know, what surface you're putting it on because it's usually just mounted to a tripod. The shots are going to be much more consistent. You're probably not going to be wasting so much time doing multiple takes. You're probably not going to be wasting so much time doing warp stabilizer on every single shot. So I think the use case is for maybe a slider, even a basic slider, you know, not, not a motorized one. I think even a basic hand operated slider, you're probably going to get more use out of it than this because I couldn't take this out. If I, if I went you know, for a walk or if I went on holiday, I'd have to carry a flat surface with me. There is really no way around it. Even this wooden surface, it does kind of like bow a little bit. I need to add some support to it. But even that, it still was being picked up on the images. So hopefully that gives you some sort of insight into this new product. For the price, it's not a massive loss if you don't use it that much. Around the house, you can definitely get some okay shots of it. And for someone like me who doesn't even have a slider, that's, that's a nice addition to kind of like the B-roll that I do for the channel. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, but that is it. I will end it there.